Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Only Fins, talking about the Blue Hippo Tang. So, this is our Blue Hippo Tang. Her name is Dory, right? What other name could she possibly have? So, her, um, her scientific name is a Paracantharus hepatis, uh, sometimes also known as the Blue Regal Tang, the Blue Hippo Tang, um, or some people more affectionately as the Dory Fish, but don't call it that eh, around me. I don't like it. <laughs> Pick one of the more appropriate names. Uh, so they were first discovered in 1766 um, in prominently the Indo Pacific uh, clear swift water, clear sorry, swift water of uh, like the seaward side of reefs. Uh, anywhere between 3 to 134 feet in depth. Uh, they live on average about 30 to 45 years and they'll achieve a maximum length of 12 inches long. As juveniles, they have a... Uh, obviously, they have this dark, rich blue, like this royal, regal blue. Um, <clears throat> And uh, as juveniles, they have a less developed black outline, as you can see on Dory here. Uh, the outline forms uh, basically a hole directly behind uh, their head once they're an adult. So this is still clearly a juvenile. Um, <clears throat> he, because he is also a surgeon fish, or she, uh, he does have they. Dory, sorry, does have a venomous caudal spine that you need to be careful of while having your hands in the tank. Once an adult, uh, they are noted to have a flat, longer body, much like Nassau tanks. Their color becomes that deep or electric blue. Their tail fin uh, comes to a V-shape, and it's that bright, rich yellow um, in their caudal, caudal area. Uh, there is another variation of the uh, blue hippo tang that actually has a yellow belly. It's a yellow-bellied um, hippo tang, and that's from predominantly the Indian Ocean. Uh, those are presumed to be males, but otherwise, there's real no way to tell between a male or a female uh, hippo tang. Besides, the females are generally a little bit larger, which is pretty common in reef fish. Habitat-wide, they need wide open spaces, room to make the big fins flap. <laughs> the larger the tank, the better. Basically, at least a hundred gallon by the time that they're an adult. Uh, so think of it like that. Uh, they, Dory can get to be 12 inches long, right? So if you only have a tank that is four feet long, she can only go four times her body length to get to the other side and then back and forth. So that's not a, a whole heck of a lot of space to swim. Juveniles especially uh, need this space or more so with their rock scape as you can see as I have, there's a lot of little crevices that they can hide. They're very skittish animals. Um, they like to tuck themselves into little nooks and crevices as I, I've shown you a couple times with Dory. She likes to get into these little <clears throat> crevices and that's where she sleeps or that's where she goes when she feels threatened. Otherwise, uh, she's a very active swimmer, loves to be in the mid to upper region of the water column. flies about. Um, a lot of times we joke and say that she hangs out with the Chromis. It says, look dad, I'm a Chromis. <clears throat> she, she literally sometimes shoals with them, which is, which is weird. Diet-wise, uh, purely uh, she would be considered a planktivore. Uh, they do eventually though eat algae. So, Well. <clears throat> Meaty foods are 
acceptable. Uh, more gut filled live foods. If you want to feed the uh, Fido to like my shrimp prior to feeding him. I've seen her pick at some of the seaweed that gets pulled off by the larger tangs in the tank, and she'll grab at that as well. But I haven't seen her actively sneak out the, the grazer. As again with all surgeon fish, um, poor diet can manifest as lateral line disease or pale color. Start to develop lateral line disease, or their color doesn't look rich and vibrant. It's generally a, a, a dietary concern. <clears throat> that which you can either just you know increase your feedings, or you can add uh, vitamin enrichment like cell to their food. Health-wise, same concerns as all other surgeon fish. Um, they are just ick magnets, right? They don't have they don't have scales per se. They have they skin like you and I, um, and they have a slime coat over that. Now their slime coat is uh, pretty horrible, pretty atrocious. It's not very thick, it's not very uh, ugly. So they are very, uh, very prone to getting ick or other diseases. I love Now, how she is, she's probably only an inch or two long, so would she be fine in, you know, like a 40 breeder right now? Sure, but you have to take into account that in a year she can, you know, be six, seven, eight inches long, and then in another year uh, or so, can be, you know, 12 inches in length, and you're going to need a space for her to do that. Husbandry wise, they are fine with really all other fish. Um, they will assert themselves and let everyone know who's in charge and, and whatnot. Um, and uh, you just have to make sure that if you're keeping other tangs in the tank or other surgeon fish, that they're not in the same uh, species. And a way to do that is do they look alike? Right? So she does not look like. Nassau tang and does not look like uh, chocolate tang and does not look like the tang. So <clears throat> that's just the general gist of it. Rather than having to go and look up their scientific name and see if they're into the same genus, it's just body shape. If their body shape is the same. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Dory. Watching her swim around and act like a cross. She's very active. I hope that we get to have her for 30 to 45 years and that she's uh, very healthy. And uh, I hope you enjoy. I look forward to learning more about her and seeing where we go with her. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you next week for the next. music and video for this one.